Uh, hopefully you can hear me now. I uh, Unfortunately, it looks like I have lost moderation rights. So Andy, if you're hearing this, um, I think you're going to have to join to just uh, approve others joining here. Ah, there we go. Morning, Brian. Morning, Tom. Can you hear me okay? I can. Yep. Excellent. So, all right, it is 11 o'clock. Um, Brian is going to jump into um, a talk on Coil Pack. Uh, if you've missed our release of Coil Pack, I encourage you to check it out. Uh, there's a blog post there. Um, Brian has been the lead developer on Coil Pack. He's been with us for, I believe, over 10 years now. Is that right, Brian? Yeah, I think so. It's amazing. I don't know how you put up with me that long. Um, <laughs> anywho, uh, so Brian, uh, you know, previous to us or prior to us uh, acquiring Expression Engine, Brian was the head of all of our Laravel de development. So um, I'm excited to hear what he has to say and uh, what he's going to be teaching us today. And without further ado, here's Brian. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> um, yeah, Tom hasn't seen this slideshow yet, so. Uh... Could be some some nice things in here. <laughs> um, as Tom said, I've been with Packetide for over 10 years. Um, I think that's more a testament to Tom's leadership than, than me as an individual, but uh, it's been a great run. It's a great place to work. Um, yeah, super happy with the, with the work we do and, and all this. Um, I live in upstate New York. Um, it's where Packetide used to be based out of. Now Tom's down in Florida, but uh, it's a beautiful summer day up here and uh, excited to be here with all of you. It's a little weird to not have anyone to look at. I did my first presentation in a long time in Philadelphia and uh, was pretty nervous for that. I'm also nervous here, but I can't see any of you, so I guess I'll just pretend you've all left and I'm talking to myself. Um, <clears throat> this presentation is probably not going to be that long, so feel free to ask questions <laughs> as we go. Um, and if I don't know how to let you in here and interrupt me, but I'm happy to uh, to have you interrupt with um, you know the slides as we go along too. If if there's anything that needs clarification, um, <laughs> thanks, Oliver. Um, yeah, so coil pack. I'll jump right in. Let's see. We'll start with what is Coil Pack, kind of get us all up to speed. And uh, the best way I like to describe Coil Pack is it's a bridge between Expression Engine and Laravel. It's a free open source package that we're providing. Um, as was asked earlier, any version, Expression Engine 7 and up, um, whether you have a paid version, you've got more than one user, or you're just a single user and you want to use it for free, um, Coil Pack's there, ready to install. Um, and uh, sorry, I'm just keeping an eye on the chat in case you guys lose me. <laughs> um, this opens the door to using your content with an incredibly powerful and popular framework. Um, if you're not familiar with Laravel, it's an open source PHP framework with a focus on elegant and expressive code. Over the past decade, Laravel has seen tremendous growth, and today it enjoys a healthy ecosystem of quality packages and developers. And that can be really valuable um, as you're looking for help on a project. You know, you can pull in a package that can handle something very specific, or there's just a great knowledge base and a community of helpful developers out there that you can bounce things off of and, and get feedback for. So we're really excited to kind of link up with the Laravel community um, and introduce Expression Engine to this great ecosystem. Um, a little bit more about Laravel. So the decision to connect with Laravel instead of a different framework was mostly based on our experience and familiarity with the framework. Uh, as Tom mentioned, we've been doing Laravel for a while. Um, back in 2012, I've tried to write down some dates because it's been a while, time flies. Uh, 2012, we were doing a mix of Expression Engine site builds and add-ons through EE Harbor and custom application development with CodeIgniter, uh, which is the PHP framework that came out of Expression Engine. Um, but we started to hear more and more about Laravel, kind of keeping an eye on, I don't know what we were reading back then, Twitter, Reddit, whatever uh, this was coming across. And that was when version 4 was, was really starting to take shape. Um, and we saw more and more powerful features, the documentation that Taylor was coming out with, and um, we were just hooked right away. We got on board with that. We've probably done dozens of 
Laravel projects in the past decade. Um, it's been a great experience for us. We're super happy with the framework. And um, so when it came time to look for, for ways to grow, as Tom said, the adjacent possible with Expression Engine, we really looked at Laravel as, as a no-brainer. Um, great community and uh, the support was really, there's nothing else like it. So that was our decision there. I know that question came up at the conference. Why did we go that way? I just kind of wanted to address that. Um, but Coilpack goes even further than simply connecting Expression Engine and Laravel. So in addition to integrating with Laravel's event and authentication systems, uh, we also have built-in support for popular templating engines like Twig and Blade, which is just part of Laravel. Um, we also included a GraphQL setup, which can be a huge help if you're interested in building a headless site or if you really just want to use Expression Engine as part of a composable architecture um, where you've got other sources of e-commerce you know, coming in on a different GraphQL endpoint, but you want to pull in some content from Expression Engine uh, through our GraphQL endpoint. And this will bring us to where are we now? I really like this picture. <laughs> I hope we're not this lost out in the woods looking at a map, but um, we first announced Coilpack at the October EConf in Philadelphia last year and delivered the alpha version before the end of November. Uh, so right around Thanksgiving in the US. And um, this was just a small private preview for anyone who had expressed interest at the conference or had hit us up on Slack after and said, you know, I want to be part of that. I say interest or skepticism. I don't know. <laughs> Can we really do this? L let me see. Uh, so our first public release was actually the beta, which shipped at the end of 2022. So we had a great habit here. I don't know if this was my idea or Tom's idea of doing all these releases right around US holidays, but this was right after Christmas, uh, before the new year, we got the beta out. Um, and it's really exciting to say that just a few weeks ago, we left our beta and released Coilpack version one. And um, that's a big milestone for us, just kind of psychologically, I guess, getting past the beta, um, but also just in terms of stability where we are. Uh, it doesn't mean that Coilpack is complete by any means. We have a ton of ideas and features that we're still working on, which is really exciting to be in that space. Um, there's still template tags that we're in the process of improving a lot of form-based stuff uh, uh, that we need to add support for. So we're still still working through those. You guys are finding bugs, um, which is great. It's helpful to, to see those come in and to uh, be able to address those. Um, but we believe that Coilpack's in, in a spot now where it can be a really powerful asset for the community. And we're just super eager to get that out there in your hands, you know, get version one out the door and, uh, and see what you all can do with it. And so that's kind of my high level look at what Coilpack is, how we got where we are. Um, but now that we have our first release behind us, I really wanted to dive into what you can actually do with Coilpack and how you might be able to use it in your projects. And this isn't an exhaustive look at everything Coilpack offers, but it's just a few areas that I thought would be worth highlighting. I don't think I've gone into anything with GraphQL in here, so I'm sorry if that was something you're interested in. Um, you can ask me after, though, and we can try to chat a little more about that. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought I went dark on you or something. The light bulb, yeah, I, I don't have Tom set up here. You can see that uh, no green screen, no cool visual effects. I'm sorry. Um, so, of course, we'll start with getting started. Um, I don't want to go too deep into this because I'm sure Robin's going to go through this on her talk. But I just wanted to show you quickly what it takes to get started with Coilpack. Um, if you've got your development environment set up, I'm a big fan of Valet, um, but I know a lot of people use DDEV, MAMP, XAMP, WAMP, uh, all the AMPs. Uh, you should be able to run these commands if you've got Composer installed and uh, get all set up with Coilpack. It should be a pretty painless experience. Um, but if you find that it isn't, please let us know. This is something we're really keen to, to reduce the friction on. And after installing Coilpack, I like to take a look at the configuration. So 
the the setup is kind of you've got your Laravel app and you have an expression engine site running inside it. So there there can be some duplication in configuration variables and, and values. So I like to take that time to go through and just use everything from Laravel's environment file and kind of pass that through because you're giving Laravel database connection information, um, URLs, paths, stuff like that, that could be easily used in your expression engine setup um, and not have to duplicate that. So yeah, things like database configuration, uh, base path, all that good stuff. There's probably a lot more that can go in here. And this is where I would love for other people in the community to show me what their config files look like or how they do this better than I do. But this is, I've built a few sites now with, with Coilpack and um, this is kind of where I've landed. And I'll move on to template caching. So. I'm a big fan of expression engines, built-in template caching. A lot of stuff I'm doing is kind of static content. Um, so the, it's a huge help, a huge performance benefit, um, decreases the page load time. Visitors are really excited about that. So what's cool about this though is, is in Coilpack, we've added the support for twig and blade templating engines, and they can also just take the native caching with them too. So you can go in there, manage your template, with Twig or Blade, enable caching. This is, I think in this example, I've got 60 minutes. Um, so as soon as that page is rendered with Twig or Blade, that content is cached. And the next time you never have to go through that rendering again. So I thought was pretty fun that, uh, that we can do that right out of the box and give you that powerful performance tool. Sorry, I'm just gonna kind of keep going through these these little slides. I don't have great transitions, so I apologize. Just try to showcase what we've got. Um, this is something I'm, I'm really excited about. This was a fun uh, challenge to, to code through and to make it work, but embedded templates is such a key part of expression engine development and letting you split up templates and reuse common portions of those throughout your build is just dries things up a lot. Make sure you don't don't repeat yourself. I'm sorry, I don't use the acronyms. Um, just keep that that code central. So something we're able to do in Coilpack uh, is to make it possible for you to embed templates of different engines within each other. So in this example, we have a twig template with a channel entries loop embedding a native template that displays that title and then embeds a blade template. And it passes some variables through to that. And um, this isn't something I'd recommend doing, you know, twig, native, blade. I, I even had an example where I went back through from blade, embedded another twig, embedded a native. This can go on forever. Um, it's not, not something that, you know, lends itself to being easy to read for people if, if there's no reason to do it. But there is one good reason to do this that I'd, I'd like to point out um, is that as we're at the early stages of coil pack and we're still working through some of the tag support um, and better field type support for add-ons as add-on developers kind of catch up to what we've introduced, you might find that those tags, excuse me, don't work out of the box as well as you'd like them to. And in that case, you have your twig template or your blade template. It might be a lot easier to just embed a native template that uses that tag. And that's kind of our, our way out, our way to get you version one right here, right now, without everything being perfect and saying, okay, I think right now the channel or the comment entries form does not render very well through Twig. So my recommendation uh, is to just embed a native template that uses that tag. And um, so th this is kind of a nice a nice feature and a, and a good way to uh, help our early adopters get through any pain points we might find. Oh, I'm sorry. Take a look at the comments real quick. Okay, pros and cons cache. Um, template debugging, this is a really quick one, but I, I figured we'd throw it in. Um, in both Twig and Blade, you can get access to Laravel's helpful dump function, uh, which is basically a, a, a pretty var dump, if you're familiar with that in PHP, where you can get the variable uh, contents and values and uh, and see those formatted really nicely. 
Uh, so that's available in Twig and Blade. And um, we also added another helpful hint in, in a template debugging, where if you have the template debugger active and you're logged in as super admin at the bottom of the page, uh, we let you know that coil pack is running. It's taken over the template library. And even further down, if, if you run, um, when a template gets retrieved, it'll tell you whether it's being processed with Twig or Blade. Uh, same thing for embeds, I believe. It'll, it'll mention what uh, template engine they're using. Oh, tinker. So I wasn't sure if I should include this. I feel like it might be a little too nerdy, but I really love Laravel's tinker utility. Um, it's a command available in every Laravel install that gives you a read evaluate print loop or REPL. And uh, that just lets you directly interact with your code uh, typing into the console. And this is one of the first things I wanted personally working in coil pack because I wasn't super familiar with how everything worked in Expression Engine. And um, this integration gave me a way to inspect and test out what was happening under the hood, kind of, you know, what is this service that Expression Engine's using? What class is behind that? Uh, what kind of variables or methods are accessible this way? And, and how can we swap those out? That was a really useful tool that I still use to kind of to find my way around code. Um, and that was always the case even, as a new Laravel developer, it's just really helpful to get in there and, and see what's happening uh, and, and play around. So that's available. That's um, a lot of these things that I'm kind of glossing over. There's great documentation on Laravel's website. Um, I'm happy to, to point anyone in that direction too, but it tells you how to, how to use these tools in a little more depth than we're covering here. And scheduled commands are another really neat part of the Laravel framework that are easy to overlook, but I think could be really valuable for an expression engine build. Um, so my example here is, is kind of contrived. You don't need to do <laughs> sync your conditional fields uh, every minute here, but just to show you what's possible. So the idea is that Laravel provides a single command that you would create a cron job for on your server or your environment. And that cron job calls the single Laravel command to run all of your scheduled commands. And that's really the only setup involved with it. So that command that runs every minute from a cron job looks through your code and says, is there anything that we need to run right now, You know, given what you're defining in your code? Is this the right environment for it? Um, you can do a lot of really cool things um, with Laravel to say, you know, only run it on one machine. If, if you've got a multi-machine setup, um, you can run it every other week, stuff like that, that you can write out fluently instead of having to remember those, those cron intervals. Um, so all of that can happen right in the code. And I think that's a huge benefit for these things. So you don't have to go on your staging server, make sure it has the cron job. You have to set up a new one for a command that you want to run there. Um, all of this gets managed in the code. You deploy it and just make sure that Laravel is set up to run these scheduled commands. And I think this could be, they even have um, setups for this where you can listen for events. So after a channel entry is published, I, I meant to add this as an example too. You can hook into an event for that and um, purge your cache or something like that. So. This is a really powerful tool. Uh, not everyone is going to need that. I, I should have mentioned all of these tips are kind of, it, if it seems like a good fit for you, use it. But otherwise, not everyone needs to be doing all of these things. Um, and authentication. So earlier I mentioned that Coil Pack integrates with Laravel's authentication system. And this is just kind of an example of what that looks like in code, uh, but basically coil packs just letting Laravel know how to see if an expression engine member is logged in. And it also provides a nice method to check their permissions. These are expression engine permissions that are defined right through the control panel, uh, this can access CP. Um, so all of that's available to Laravel, which is really useful 
if you're creating a user-based experience in Laravel and you want to get your Expression Engine members hooked up with that, um, I think Stephen, I'm I'm going to butcher everyone's last name that I try to pronounce today, so I'm, I apologize. I'm going to say Stephen Galbraith uh, was doing a system like this, and uh, this is kind of our first actual instance of testing this out. So it can be really helpful if that's the direction you need to take your build. Uh, it just opens up a, a whole lot of possibilities for using your member data in a Laravel application. All right, so that's a lot of code. Uh, I apologize if you're not a developer and you're looking at that and you say, when is this going to end? Uh, it ends <laughs> now, I'm thankful to say. Uh, yeah, sometimes looking at a bunch of code examples is boring or intimidating. So I just want to circle back on what all of that actually means. And Coilpack's goal is just to bring you a set of powerful tools that enable you to take your Expression Engine content to new places. And that's what all these examples are. It's just my attempt to illuminate a tiny bit of what is possible with Expression Engine and Coilpack and the tools that Laravel is bringing to you there are so many more. Um, I'm really eager to see, maybe we'll have people coming out of the community and showing what a cool live wire setup is where uh, you can make kind of single page application type feel with these components in Laravel. Um, I think you guys are already showing me a lot of stuff in Twig and uh, GraphQL that that I'm not aware of. So I'm really excited what the community stuff uh, is going to come out from this. And I think this went a little faster than I thought, so I'm sorry, but we're, <laughs> we're going to have plenty of time for questions. Um, a big thank you, first of all, to the community and all of the EE partners. Uh, you guys made all this possible to, to do this development, kind of encouraged us to, to move in this direction. and. Um, yeah, none of this would be possible without you guys. And an extra special thanks. I've got a little list here to Stephen Galbraith, our, our first coil pack user. He was pre-alpha. We were kind of talking through this stuff. He had questions about EE models uh, a long time ago. And I said, well, you know, hold on a little bit. We might be able to get you those Laravel models. And uh, as soon as the October conference was done, he was on board with this, our, our first tester. So that was great. Um, Brian Litzinger helped us work through, you know, how we were going to handle add-ons and give them the support they needed. Uh, that was really valuable insight through the alpha. And Blair, I'm going to mess up his last name too. I don't know if he's on. Uh, Blair Likala uh, had a, a lot of great insights and testing for us in the GraphQL add-on development. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, and another one, I, Jared. Cheese bro, I, that's how I, how I read it. So um, I'm sorry. Everybody needs to give me pronunciations of their last names because this is, this is bad. Um, Jared has done a ton of work with Twig and really shown me you know, more of what's possible as a Twig developer. He's got a great repo out there um, that everybody can get started with to see how you might use Coilpack and Twig together. Um, and Gavin, I couldn't find his last name. I don't know if he's on here. Jay Cogs, that's all, all I know him by. Um, but Gavin has been, I, I would say, more critical of Coilpack and how it's being used. And I think that is really valuable. It's great to not just have people who are on board with something. We want to know if you're a little skeptical of this or if you're concerned about how um, this is going to impact you know, the, the whole product, and <laughs> all these cheese gifts. Um, and th that's super helpful. I really appreciate that. I'm glad that we have Gavin with us and, um, and you know, kind of challenging any assumptions we've got. And I'll uh, continue on to Soul Space, Mitchell and John Henry Donovan. Uh, that was a great experience to do a podcast with those guys. And uh, it's super Awesome to see their excitement for where Expression Engine and Coilpack are going. So thanks for being on board. And uh, Matt Stauffer and Titan were huge fans of Titan through all our Laravel work that we've done. And it's really exciting for us, for me personally, to uh, to have them on board with us too. So thank you to everybody. Uh, it, it's been 
it's been a lot of work, but we're we're super excited to give this out to you guys. And that's going to be it for me. I can take some questions now. I don't know if you want to hop back in, Tom. Hey, can everybody hear me all right, too? Yep, I can hear you. All right. Awesome. All right, let's go to the session Q and A. All right, so we do have a question. Does it impact the speed of a site when different template engines work together? My assumption was that one site would be having one type of template engine, either Twig, Blade, Native, uh, but I haven't used it quite yet. Yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, I haven't noticed any large impact from from using Twig and Blade together. There isn't a lot of difference in terms of what they're doing under the hood for, for parsing. Um, Twig and Blade also both parse differently than Expression Engine, where they kind of take your syntax and turn it into a, a pure PHP representation of it. So if you're doing um, curly sign, <clears throat> left curly percent if in twig you know that's basically getting boiled down to a php tag if and and cached as that um so the first compilation through there or the the first view compiles that and then uh subsequent ones just kind of execute that quickly so i haven't noticed anything i'm i'm sure that you know mixing all of these together it introduces a little more complexity into the process, and it certainly could uh, have a speed impact. Awesome. Um, so Brian Litzinger has a question as well. Uh, are you able to get data on how many people slash sites are using CoilPack? Just wondering what the adoption is like now, or um, if you'll be able to see it one year out from now, uh, things along those lines. Um, off the top of my head, Brian, I don't know if we have that in our normal data, do we? Um, I think all we can see is the packagist installs, um, you know, that that raw number. It's not really, we don't report it back as part of the Expression Engine license data. Yeah. Um, maybe that's something we want to do. I think it's worth consideration, but yeah, uh, that's a good question, Brian. Um, you know, I liked seeing Brian, uh, how you walk through the example of embedding, you know, EE inside a twig, inside a blade, things like that. Um, you know, because there are different strengths in different templating languages. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I think it's a great example, right? Where somebody has potentially an older site and they want to, uh, update part of it or add on, they could do that in twig or blade, or they could do it in GraphQL. Um, so I, I really do. I look at that and that's very powerful uh, to be able to do that across the board. Yeah, great job on that. Thanks. Um, so I'm not seeing a lot of other QA come in. Uh, I would love to do something. This is kind of a bit of a um, uh, off in left field idea. Uh, Andy actually thought this was a good idea. He pinged me and I agree with him. Um, so Brian, I don't know if you want to stop sharing your screen, but I know that there were yeah. several people in here who mentioned that they have built uh, sites with coil pack. Uh, would anybody or all of you be up for joining us uh, on the call and we can just discuss, you know, how did that go? What did you find? Um, you know, maybe what wasn't expected, uh, what worked better than you thought, you know, those types of things. Let's see if anybody volunteers to jump on here. All right, do you see Q&A lit up again? Is it possible think... to set up caching through Laravel rather than using native expression engine cache? cache? even when using expression engine template engine? That's a good That's question. question. <laughs> I'd have to think uh, Jared, about if that. you try hard enough, you can do anything. Um, yeah, sorry. that's true. <laughs> if you believe in yourself. Um, caching through Laravel. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the way that we handle requests go through Laravel first. So if you set up some kind of caching middleware that's hitting First, I would think that's that's possible to do on the Laravel level.
I think we need Jared to come in here and, and tell me how to pronounce his last name. I noticed that Blair called out um, that last night uh, 3.0, the 3.0 update was pushed for MUX and it has full GraphQL support and way too many parameters, which means <laughs> a lot of options and flexibility. I like it. Very cool. Chess bro. Awesome. So does anybody want to come on and chat their coil pack experience? Turns out there's construction going on. Oh, Doug asked, uh, what kind of feedback have you gotten from the Laravel community as a whole? Um, I don't, uh, yeah, I think we're still kind of flying under the radar a little bit, and which is kind of nice as we wrap up support for the the rest of the things we want to add. Um, I do think you know our conversations with Titan and uh, and their developers, it's been a pretty seamless and and easy to integrate uh, experience, and and that's really great feedback to have. Um, of course, you know we'd love to see suggestions and and. Uh, issues come up in our GitHub repo and uh, as we get along and, you know, chart the next course. Yeah. You know, I'd add to that. Um, you know, the launch of version one is really a starting point for coil pack. Um, and you know, we're excited. We're excited to hit that milestone. Um, I, I would concur with a lot of what Brian has said. Uh, the only thing I'd add to that is I have had several people reach out to me, um, and just make comments along the lines of, Hey, this is really cool to see. Um, a lot of those people either used EE or code igniter specifically back in the day. Um, so that's, that's definitely cool to see come up. Um, you know, there's been some videos that have gone out specifically, uh, in the Laravel direction as well. Um, and feedback on those has been positive as well. So, um, but we're by and large looking at this as a starting point and, uh, to build upon from here. And, you know, we kind of mentioned the multi-year arcs. So I think it's a good place to be right now. Moving through the comments here. Blair, any chance you want to join us and talk about uh, how adding GraphQL support for Mux was or, or building with it? I'm going through to see who else had mentioned they were building with Coil Pack. Robert, we'd love to hear your experience as well. Robin said Blair. Oh, there he is. Sorry, you can hear me? Hey, we can. Okay, let me... How... Yeah, I've been bugging Brian so much. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> love it. <laughs> no, it was really helpful with the GraphQL stuff to have someone who has actually you know, had an add-on they were trying to use it with. So thank uh, you. I feel like this doesn't work. How do I make this work? There's so many DMs, so many. Um, Is there? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, sorry. Where is... Oh, share screen. Okay. Um, oh, I thought there was a way to do... So I guess I'm going to try doing it this way. I think I had to share a whole window... You do the share menu. Yeah, I'm clicking it and it doesn't do it. Oh, I better not have to restart everything to give it permission. So I was wondering. Putting me on the spot. Let's see if that works. Oh, that works. Okay. Well, Whoa. I might not be able to show code. So this uses graph to get. I ah, see. I can't change tabs. That's fine. So here's the demo. So a uh, big dude fan here, but. We've got GraphQL pulling metadata about timed metadata about um, kind of who's in the trailer at what time. So at some point, 
when it changes. We'll see um, kind of the lower third showing up here on the left. We'll see data here in the middle and on the right show come and go. But the idea is timed metadata you can use for a lot of things. If you were doing, say, like a live coding or like an on-demand coding thing and you wanted someone to be able to copy and paste the code at the point that you were showing it, you can do that. But usually you have to do that over JavaScript. And so graph really helps kind of standardize being able to grab that data uh, when, you, when you want to pull it. So this is all vanilla stuff, I think. Again, this, I have the code editor, but I can't show it. Let's see if this works. That works. So this is going to be the gross way to show it, but <laughs> the query is right there. So um, this is all local development. So like if I went to that, <clears throat> if you never messed with graph, um, with a field, you can leave it blank and hit go, and it fills in all the, the parameters for you. So these are all the parameters, the flat ones, that can give you the data back um, for that field. I also have the time metadata as a grid field um, with relationships, which is what I bugged Brian to death about making <laughs> relationships work correctly, uh, that they weren't showing null. But um, my experience was building an add-on, so I was able to... Um, take an existing add-on that had tags and uh, make those tags work with um, both graph, twig, and blade just by simply defining types. So I have uh, type files that just say if it's a string or an integer or a float or whatnot. And then you get to describe what each one is. So if I were to hover over this and go to this one, I can scroll down, or not that one. It is... It's the video type. And so these are all of the ones that I've created, like if it's a live stream or an asset, um, the file name, and then I added this file name of the uploaded video. Um, so you can go through and it's it's like a cooler way of doing documentation. It's, it's very self-documenting. So if you were to try to build, especially a headless site, then you can pop this open, be able to see what all the parameters are that you can pull, get sample data if you've already got data in there, read what the types are, what they do in line. You don't have to open up a separate browser tab to be able to see those. Um, in this case, I've had the flat ones, but then I also have loops of things like um, if it's a if it's a demo video, you can see expiration. So like I give it in a few different formats. So this is another type. It's like an embedded type. So you can kind of navigate all of the different tags and loops that are available. And from a developer standpoint, I didn't really have to do much. I just had to um, just make that those type files and just make sure that they were actually outputting the right type in the first place, <laughs> which took a little <laughs> bit of work, but <laughs> should have been fixed from the start. But that was my experience, super easy. And of course, if, if there were certain, some things that I wanted to change in the process. Like I do hide some things like um, since this is a live streaming app, um, we don't want the stream key to be accessible because then anyone could grab the stream, stream key and stream on their own. And so like I intentionally did not add that type to this so that someone couldn't query it. But if it's there in the express engine, the native tag, since the developer would have control over showing that tag or not. So. Yeah, that's cool. That's to see. great. I don't think if there's anything else, but that that was my my experience. It's really easy. I love that it just sort of works out of the box. And uh, I'll be trying to build more stuff later. I'll finish my little demo Dune site. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like I keep seeing your your mux stuff there, and I'm like, I need like a video site to build out and use this on. <laughs> I have this one in, in yeah, this, the Cloudflare stream one are very similar. And I'll be doing the same thing with the stream one. It's just a, a lot technically simpler. Hmm. So That's awesome. Thanks a bunch, guys. I'll yeah, hey, thanks for coming Blair. on. Uh, I know I personally always like seeing uh, what you're building. Um, remember the conference, I don't know if it was two years ago now, where you demoed Mux for the first time. being like, wow, that's, that's impressive. Um, so it's always cool to see see what you're working on so thanks for jumping on sharing there it goes cool looks awesome yeah i felt that way after the october conference too which is the first econf i'd ever been to but just all of the 
in the the meeting areas there and stuff what people had up on their laptops that they built it was like wow you know <laughs> you guys got to share cool. this stuff it's it's awesome so i think we have roughly five more minutes here um robert do you want to jump on at all share some of your experience or So I, lo I love looking at the comments and asking somebody if they want to jump on when I have no idea if they're even still on the session, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I noticed er uh, Doug had mentioned, whoa, EE -E and Tinker is rad. Um, you know, it's kind of funny if I think back kind of early days of Coil Pack, I remember Eric Lamb, um, I think, he, I think tweeting about like, oh, wouldn't it be so cool if we could use Tinker with Expression Engine? And it was like the week before, Brian, you had pinged me and said, hey, check this out. And you were showing me Tinker uh, with Expression Engine. And it, it took like everything I had not to say something like, hey, actually you can, you know, but um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I think it was when I was first trying to do stuff with the models, the EE models, and I was, I just I just wanted to touch the code without having to set up a module and a or a plugin or all of that, you know, just to see what I was going to get back from this. So I think it's a really valuable tool. I'm curious to hear what others experiences with that as they get into it. Absolutely. Um, Eric, I don't know if you can answer this, uh, you know, if you want to jump on or in Slack, but I know at one point uh, we had a very, very short dialogue about uh, GraphQL and Cart throb is that is that something that's in the works? Am I allowed to ask such a thing? <laughs> um, we had one more question, Brian. It's if you are in Slack, and yes, uh, you already answered that. Perfect. Yeah, I okay. I don't remember if it's just at Brian or probably not. I think I was late to the party. Sure. All right. So it sounds like Eric can neither confirm nor deny um, what's going on with GraphQL and Cartthrop. So all good, all good. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I know Andy's going to jump on in uh, a couple minutes here to kind of wrap us up towards lunch. Uh, before we do, any other questions? What's for lunch? That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> All right. No. So Eric did say that he can, that they're definitely working towards 100% compatibility with Coil Pack. Love it so much. So that's good to hear. All right. I guess when Andy shows up, it means we should probably jump off, huh? I'm just here to try to get people to share their experiences about Coil Pack. So all these, all these people said that they, uh, they built on it. We want to see it, man. We want to see what's going on out there. Cool. The guys do, uh, you know, definitely share your experiences, whether you're not willing to do it here, share it on Slack, share it with the community. Again, the, the community only gets better. Coil pack only gets better. Expression engine only gets better. The more we share this kind of stuff with each other. Um, there's a lot of us like, you know, some of you guys are like, I don't know, really know what I'm doing. I've just installed it. That's, that's the same with tons of people in the community. They have, they have no clue where to start other than the docs. And that's a great starting point. And Brian and the team have done a great job with that. But you know, the way that expression engine grows is through people sharing their experiences, sharing troubles, sharing things that they didn't understand and how they came to understand it, or just reaching out for help about things they didn't understand. So, um, you know, today's definitely a great day. Um, if you want to share during some of the breaks or reach out to Brian or Tom or the rest of the team in Slack um, and, and share with the community what's going on. That's the only way we grow together. So, Absolutely. All right. But with that, I will um, say thank you to Brian and thank you for Tom for stepping in for Q&A there. And uh, appreciate that, guys. Brian, appreciate all your work that you've done on Coil Pack. Um, I know it's been a, a long effort to get here. And it's funny that you said, I, I heard during part of that where you said, you know, when I started working on Coil Pack, I didn't know how Expression Engine worked. <laughs> like, I mean, that just that just shows how long Coil Pack has been in, in, been in um, process here. 
So yeah. uh, I'm glad to see it get to this point. I'm glad to see Brian, uh, you know, really jump into the EE core team and, and where he's going with this. So um, I'm excited about the future because of Coil Pack and, and because of the team. So thank you, Brian. Awesome. Thank you, Andy.